All right, so this is um, this is auction lot number two zero seven sixty one. This is a really incredible book. The cover is not in the best condition, but let's talk about it. Uh, this is an, a fundraiser for Dreams to Reality Foundation. This is a true antique, wonderful book of photography around the world with a camera. You know, when you look at it, you wouldn't know that this is over 100 years old, but it is. And there's some staining on the, on the cover. There's fading. It looks like it had some fading and water damage, but it's not actually water damage. I think it's just, um, you know, being old and being out in the sun or having, you know, somebody left it on a table. Um, but for as old as it is, it's actually holding up pretty good. It looks like it's been on a bookshelf because the cover is lighter than the spine, and that usually is a sign that the book has been on a shelf. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go through the book, and we'll see some of the beautiful pictures. This is a photography book. There is gold ink, and you can see that Leslie Judge Company made the book um, in New York City Publisher. There is some kind of green, I don't know if it was a wash or a treatment, but I think the book actually was treated on the edge with some sort of green ink or something. And here's a picture of a lady wearing some very uh, classic, you know, clothing. This is remarkably new looking, you know, the paper is good quality, so it looks really brand new. It kind of looks like someone's, you know, did a reproduction of an old photo, but it's actually really an old photo. And the ink's really nice. It's a gold, sort of a golden ink. And um, let's take a look. This is from 1910. So you can see here, 1910 is the year that the book was published. So it's 109 years old as of today. The camera tells the truth. No book of travel ever published contains so much valuable information as the beautifully and copiously illustrated book you now hold in your hands. The reason for this is that the publishers have let the camera instead of the pen tell the story. What would take page after page of description can be told by a single picture occupying but a very small space on the page. The book has special interest for those who are unable to take a trip around the world. Nonetheless, it is hoped that the volume will be nonetheless interesting to globetrotters and it's, if it is true that the memory of a thing is often as pleasant as the thing itself, travelers, while looking at this book, may expect to live over the delighted times they've had in foreign countries. At present, there is a spreading movement all over the United States, a movement that has for its motto, See America First. This is a very interesting statement that reminds me of our president. Bearing this fact in mind, the publishers have given much space to the sights and wonders, unequaled by any other country, to be found in this glorious land of ours. As most American travelers start their trips from New York, so the publishers very wisely have opened the book with a chapter on the great seaport metropolis of New York. Four days are spent viewing the attractions of New York, then embarking on any of the great ocean liners that leave the, this port, one can visit the other countries and see what attractions they offer to the tourist. Of course, in 1910, commercial air travel did not exist at that time. People were flying around in biplanes, and only the very few rich people could afford to even own a biplane in 1910, only seven years after the Kitty Hawk flew, the first powered flight. Few persons get behind the scenes at political conventions, but this book will be a pass to each convention of the two great political parties. In its pages, one may follow the presidential candidates on their whirlwind campaigns and visit the imagination, the successful candidates. This book will show how the camera catches the leading news events. It will take one to great fires, shipwrecks, religious conventions, railroad disasters. In fact, wherever the newspapers send their reporters, it will, take, it will take one to all the theaters that have recently delighted the crowds of gay Broadway. It will show leading actors and actresses as they look off and on the stage. One of the great attractions of this volume is the trip 
that it, it enables one to take with the fleet in its recent spectacular voyage around the world. This splendid chapter alone is worth the price the publishers ask for the entire volume. Everyone likes to look at pictures. The publishers have every reason to believe that this superior work, the first of its kind ever undertaken in the United States, will be warmly welcomed by the American public. Signed, Leslie Judge Company, Publishers, 5th Avenue and 27th Street, New York City. And then we have a, a, a letter here, uh, which is written to the Leslie Judge Company. And it is from Mr. George Gardner Rockwood. And it says, I have looked over the advanced copy of your beautiful new book, Around the World with a Camera. And as one of the oldest photographers in the country, I desire to express my great appreciation of this superb volume. And you can read the rest of the letter on your own time. In color, we have an old color photograph. You can see that the color has been done by hand because I don't believe they had color photography back then. But this is a sporting section and we'll go through it. Now, I won't talk about every photo. Let, let's have a little bit of something for you to enjoy. But you can see 1911 baseball's banner year. You can see a written description of each of these sections. And you've got a tear in this page. Someone has torn the page. Uh, you have people like uh, Doc White, Jack Stahl, Jack Combs, Christy Mathewson, Mathewson, and Christy is a man's name, Eddie Collins. You've got crowds watching instead of the players at a ball game. So you have all of the people that are watching the ball game. So this is a very fun section. Batter up! Snapshots of the most spectacular players which have made baseball history. And you can see that baseball was a big sport back then. Now we have New World's Records in Florida under Sporting Gossip. And you can see here there's Eugene Ellie's Greatest Airplane Fleet. Feet. And it looks like a battleship with a biplane taking off of the deck. So you can see that someone uh, flew off of the deck of a, uh, an actual uh, ship, which I think is neat. It landed on the cruiser Pennsylvania, which is an old battleship. A day with the Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts over here, stalking the enemy. Learn to creep silently through the underbrush. The horse has his day in court. And you can see a really interesting training photo. Boy, that looks dangerous. I wonder if that horse made it. That's such a big jump. Strenuous pastimes of the Navy. You can see some guys doing wrestling and boxing. Your motor car as a war machine. All right, interesting stuff. They've got war, war cars. And reporting the Vanderbilt race. A pictorial, a pictorial story of the sensational 1910 contest for the most coveted automobile trophy in America. Do you want to fly? Looks like a factory building planes. There's another tear here. There's some tears here in the book. Uh, little tears. Where are the five million fish? Looks like you've got uh, some kind of a excursion. Uh, the women are as enthusiastic as the men, it says. Sporting gossip. A picture of a policeman with a, a classically dressed lady. The stranger appealing for information to a big policeman. How I saw New York for the first time. A young woman strange, a young woman stranger's visit day. Whoops, a young woman stranger's first day in New York. We've got pictures of her getting initiated by a broker into the mysteries of the ticker. Back then, they didn't have internet; they had t ticker tapes, which brings us to the phrase "ticker tape parade," because people would have all this ticker tape, and they would throw little pieces of it out when they had a celebration. Um, you can see these wonderful buildings, older buildings. I've seen this statue. Uh, I believe the statue is still around. It's in the, this is the uh, statue of the late President Chester A. Arthur in the quiet northeast corner of the square. 
I've been here to the, uh, this is the Flatiron Building. I've been there. So there's lots of wonderful photos of New York here that you can see. Okay. And other pictures of New York, various places, dining, uh, local attractions, and more fishing. Looks like fishing is very popular at this time. They didn't really have commercial fishing vessels maybe back then. They probably did have commercial vessels, but not the same as what we have today. Here is a, a, a live buffalo, and I guess they're feeding the buffalo, domesticated buffaloes. And this is another, you know, scene, the $1 million Lowe Memorial Library at Columbia University. You'll notice a lot of dirt roads. There aren't very many paved roads. And here is an actual elephant. The, you know, the printing back then was good, but it's not like today. You know, it has a very different look to it. The printing presses were all managed by hand. You always have that little bit of bleeding and inconsistencies to the print that we, we no longer have in today's printing. We take, uh, really take it for granted. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you look at New York back then, there were no, no big skyscrapers. I don't think the first big skyscraper went in until the Empire State Building went in, which was many years later. How the other half in New York lives, you know, people, just ordinary, everyday people. Here's one that says, worse than the sweatshop, a whole family of finishing pants at 10 cents a dozen. Boy, I guess back then, um, you know, the... Labor was cheap. People could get, you know, people working for very low wages. Hundreds of working women in a large restaurant. Busy scene in a big factory employing many women. So it looks like factory work was done by women back then, a lot of it. What a cold wave means to New York. Scenes of snow, the spring flood of immigration at the Port of New York. That seems very timely. And you'll see there's a lot of very white faces. Uh, Swedish peasant girls, veritable Amazons with their heavy cedar chests awaiting customs inspection. This one is famous Coney Island where New York's heated millions find relief by the ocean. And they're all, if you look at that, that's a picture of, and we might want to rotate it, Hannah. You can see a picture of the people at the beach. All right. And then let's come back over here. A notable industrial anniversary. Interesting stuff. All right, we'll move things along a little bit, let you have something to, to look at on your own. A holiday season of 1908, most prosperous ever. Okay, I think there's two pages here. School days aboard a United States battleship. So there's a battleship and then behind a great city's prison bars. Looking down on Center Street, an attractive view of the prisons. That's a funny way of saying it. Executive Office of the Tombs. Here's a cell. They look pretty much like they do today. Interior of a steel cell which was occupied by C.W. Morse, the New York banker in the tier set apart in the new prison for federal prisoners. And this huge kitchen where the food is prepared for 500 prisoners. Wow, that's a big kitchen. And there's a chapel for the prisoners as well. New York's wonderful new scheme for fighting fire. Boy, that's a big bunch of people with fire hoses. A lot of fire hoses. Wow, they did it very differently back then. It was all labor intensive. Lots of fire people. And snapshots of 10 financiers. This is Mr. Vanderbilt, Mr. Pierpont Morgan. This is some very famous faces. Thomas Ryan, Mr. Andrew Carnegie, W.A. Clark, Jacob Schiff, Anthony Brady, George Gould, and of course, Mr. John D. Rockefeller and James J. Hill. There's some really nifty, neat pictures in here. Wow. It's a wonderful book. Probably movie, movie makers would love this book. It would give them some inspiration for ideas. New York's mounted police and their well-trained horses. The street garb of the stylish New York woman photographed from 
various different angles. Wow, people wore a lot of clothes back then. Must have been very expensive being alive in 1908. Educating the little ones in New York's kindergarten. Boy, kindergartens were very different back then too. Not so many students. Look how few students were in each class. A fisherman's paradise in a great city. Costly churches and unattractive homes. Interesting. Coney Island with the lid partly on. All right. Looks like you've got people at the beach. And there you've got picturesque scenes in dreamland. And the most popular method of sightseeing in New York looks like motor carriage. They have motor carriages for that. And novel scenes in foreign lands with these various countries covered. You can see everywhere they went. Delights of a voyage on a modern ocean liner. They were very fancy back then. Odd phases of life that attract travelers to the West Indies. You can see there's chocolate being harvested here. Cocoa beans in Trinidad. Novel scenes in foreign lands. And it is just beautiful. Leading figures and scenes in Jerusalem's Easter week. You can see what Israeli life was like. The world's most noted fortress and its quaint town. And the highway from the Rock of Gibraltar to Spain. Very ostentatious uh, uniforms. Turkey's new glad era of constitutional government. Boy, they wore a lot of medals back then. I don't know how they, how they fought with so many medals on. Strange people and scenes in a South Sea island. You can see all the um, people eating alligator. Bringing home a trophy of the chase and triumph, which is an alligator, apparently. Maybe it's a crocodile. No, it looks like a crocodile, actually. Natives fight Americans in the Congo Free State. Uh, interesting. There's the Congo. Cannibals. Wow. Cannibals in the Kasai region holding funeral rites over the body of a slain tribesman. Cannibals. I wonder who they were eating. Well, I won't be going there anytime soon. In the land of the Sphinx and the pyramids. This is Egypt. You can see over here, this is a photograph. You can see the, the pyramids of Giza there. Very nice, interesting stuff. Pleasures and penalties of motoring abroad. I know there's two pages here, there we go. What the camera found in a European auto tour. Lots of great stuff. Various types of the peasant women of Europe. Picturesque scenes in East Africa, the president's hunting ground. Governor Bell of Uganda and some of his trophies of the chase. And you can see zebras there. And then let's keep going. Got quite a few pages left. Odd sights for the tourist in Naples, Italy. And then we have curious scenes that attract visitors to the Bahamas. They call this Puerto Rico, not Puerto Rico. I guess the name was changed eventually. But we have Puerto Rico. We have sunny southern islands. We'll speed things up a little bit. Uh, here, here's the Bahamas, South Africa. They really jumped around. They didn't really organize it by, you know, by geography. They just, they just jumped around. Beautiful Hawaiian photographs. Here's pictures of Chinese people in Hawaii. You can see that the Chinese apparently went to Hawaii to help with things like coffee growing. A famous winter resort in the Bahamas. We're back to the Bahamas again. Interesting. I've been there. It's a beautiful place to, to visit. Curious scenes enjoyed by travelers in the American tropics. Alaska. There's Alaska. Haiti. This is a really big book. China, Turkey, some really, really great pictures. Cuba, Southern Italy. Wow. Streets of Messina. Boy, it looks a lot like downtown Los Angeles. You know, where they're just very, I guess people were poor and they just hung out. Things, uh, things have been, I guess, 
We're very fortunate in today's society that the poor have running water and roofs over their heads. You know, anybody who wants it has running water and sanitation. I know a lot of people live without it, but here in America, we're very fortunate that even our poorest have running water and toilets. This is Aaron's Isle. Uh, here is Italy and seismic disasters. Egypt again, different parts of Egypt. Here is the British West Indies. And popular summer journey through picturesque lands of the midnight sun. Again, the West Indies, some very interesting outfits. Boy, you could really get some great ideas for doing television shows and, you know, television shows and movies if you're somebody that's like a, a production designer. Hawaii's leper colony. I remember hearing about this. I saw it actually in, in a movie with Charlton Heston um, that they had leper colonies at one time. I guess they didn't know how to cure leprosy. I thought you cured it with penicillin, but it's actually a disease, it's a bacterial infection. Here is Hudson Fulton celebrations. We've got Europe. We have Jamaica. There's two pages here. We have uh, big game hunting. That's unfortunate, but you know people get really upset when they when their lions are hunted. I'm much more upset about rhinos being hunted than I am about lions. Lions are predators. They kill all kinds of animals, and you know they're killing all kinds of animals. So for us to be, um, you know, like outraged by a lion getting killed. I mean, lions are killing all kinds of other you know wonderful animals all the time. Here's London, uh, more Egypt photos. They really jump around. I guess they were making it sort of a variety. And um, here's East Africa. And Santo Domingo. And again, Puerto Rico, they called it, not Puerto Rico. I guess that's before it became part of the United States protectorates. And Easter, where Easter had its origin. The Garden of Gethsemane, one of, of Palestine's most famous spots. Now, following the army and the navy with a camera. And let's go to what that looks like. We've got pitching tents at West Point. That's fun. Port Omaha, Nebraska. The Making of a Soldier, Fitting Young Men for the Navy in Norfolk, Virginia. We've got Hudson Fulton, another biplane here. And wow, a dash around the Statue of Liberty, Wilbur Wright making a flight over New York Bay during the Hudson Fulton celebrations. That's a gem of a photo. You know, that's Wilbur Wright after he made the powered flight. Now you're gonna to have to help me out because I don't know if it was his brother or him that did the first flight. Do you happen to know, Hannah? No. All right, so let's keep going. And um, let's see, this is the first modern battle fleet sh sh battleship fleet that ever sailed around the world. Ships were much smaller back then, but there's the fleet right there. All right. And here is midshipman boxing. And they did a lot of stuff in the when they were in the Navy. They all got around, and, and I guess they had basketball teams. They had weightlifting. And here is Puerto Rico again, spelled P-O-R-T-O, -O, Puerto Rico. And let's see, there's lots and lots of fun stuff. Now, I find all of these photos very interesting and uh, very fun. Very fun to see the real past, you know, look at things in the past. This book is a treasure. I have never seen another copy of this book, and, you know, there aren't that many around, but it really is a treasure. Sydney, Australia. Strange sights for the sailors of our Pacific fleet. Long, long, long canoes. 
Oh, look at that. Long canoes. People jumping off a bridge. Not to kill themselves, of course, just for fun. All right. Now, a little trip around the United States with a camera. Some American buildings of marked historical interest. Ruins of Reed's Old Mill, built before the Revolution on a marsh near the village of Westchester, New York. We have the famous Verplank House, birthplace of the Society of the Cincinnati. The Poe Cottage, home of, former home of Edgar Allan Poe. Interesting. Fun stuff. And Chicago's Hot Weather Playgrounds for young people. New York's poor children on their summer playgrounds. And amusing the winter visitors to Florida. Indian women of the great Northwest. You can see that our motion picture depictions of them look very much like these photos. Feats of Radcliffe College Girls in Harvard University's Gymnasium. And boy, these poor ladies had to wear these enormous outfits to do exercise. I, I would imagine that it would be really, 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 really frustrating to have to sweat in one of these big outfits. My goodness. Attractions and Glories of Boston. The largest asylum for the insane in America. Boy, they don't really look insane. They're all hanging out just doing stuff. Sewing and and doing activities. Interesting. But you know, one thing I know is that back, uh, you know, at that time, nonprofit organizations did most of the charitable work. It wasn't government that tried to do welfare. It was, uh, it was nonprofit groups, people and volunteers. More fishing, you've got sharks, you've got uh, a hammerhead, and a six-foot tarpon, which was landed without the assistance of a gaff. You've got a big, great white uh, shark. Now, they called it, listen to what they call it, proud fishermen displaying their day's catch, including a large porpoise. But I don't see a porpoise. I just see a great white shark. I think they thought that was a porpoise. Leopard or man-eating shark, shark nearly 16 feet long, caught on a hook in Biscayne Bay. And here is the frolic and pranks of college men. This is Seattle, Washington, Philadelphia on the right, women's clothing and fashion. Lots of fur, a lot of dead minks back then. Marvelous reproduction of Custer's last fight. That's interesting. Uh, and then... Alaska Yukon Pacific Exposition. West Virginia rural communities, Florida Everglades. Interesting, big, a lot of buffalo. I noticed there's a lot of buffalo hanging around. They have zoo buffalo, uh, so the menagerie. And you've got uh, women in St. Louis. And then you've got pageant making. And you have a windy day in Chicago where women's clothes are hiking up because it's so windy. I think that's one page. And profitable ostrich, ostrich farming. That's interesting. The drying of ostrich plumes. Fashionable women seen in Atlantic City boardwalks. And they had pedal cars. You could pedal around the boardwalk. Little bicycles. Three-wheeled bicycles. Here is the exuberance of the college student. Kids at play. Indians of New Mexico. Strange home and peculiar practices of Arizona red men. The Panama Canal. That's when they were building the Panama Canal before it was finished. What a huge project that was. Chicago women, Philadelphia. And then we've got uh, greatest banquet ever given by an American college. Interesting. It is pretty big. All right. And then animal training. They're training a pig. 
They're training a bear to stand on the back of a dog. I actually think this is not a photo. <laughs> this looks more like a drawing, but, um, but maybe some of the photos were enhanced. I know that a lot of photographs were enhanced with painting and retouched and such. Uh, and then you've got the circus. You've got the circus and you have a New Year's celebration, New Year's coming, New Year's celebration. Now, news events. The tragic fate of a big ocean liner, and they're not talking about the Titanic. It's an entirely different one, but it is the White Star Line. The Steamship Republic after her collision with the Florida. Really interesting stuff. Lots and lots of tragic moments in history. Probably some fodder for, you know, other kinds of movies and things we haven't thought of yet, but boy, is this fun stuff. Now we have the fearless suffragette on Boston Commons. Women who were, you know, so they call them sandwich girls, the uh, women's voter rights advocates. Lots of fun stuff from where I used to live. Alexandria, Virginia, the 120th anniversary of Washington's First inauguration as president. That's neat. I'll stay away from all the tragedies. You know, I'm not really a big tragedies person. We'll leave that for Shakespeare fans. I'm not, you know, I, I, I like to entertain myself with fun things. I don't think uh, train wrecks are that fun, but there are some interesting photos of those. Fastest naval vessel of her class in the world making 26.52 knots. That is fast, wow. That's fast by today's standards. And you've got a ship on its side, the Gladiator. But a lot of ships sank, but we never heard about them. The Titanic was the most famous, but you've got shipwrecks abounds. They have lots of shipwrecks. Uh, interesting. Boy, so much tragedy. But it looks like news hasn't changed much over the years. You know, nothing but nonstop tragedies. And then we have one of the most notable religious gatherings of the year, the recent great meeting of the layman's missionary movement at Carnegie Hall, New York, where 5,000 persons were addressed by, secret, by Secretary Taft and other prominent men. And this is a tornado of the South. And a... Someone killed an elephant. Magnificent onyx punch set presented to the cruiser California. What in the world is that? Worst airship disaster on record. Wow, that's before <laughs> the Hindenburg. The Morel, the largest ever made, ascending at San Francisco just before it collapsed and fell 300 feet, badly injuring all its 16 passengers. And apparently nobody died. It had six gasoline engines. It's a big dirigible. Probably they used helium back then. The war in Morocco. Floods of the West and South. More dirigibles, lots of dirigibles. You know, this is a steam car, the White Steamer. Uh, I know that Jay, Jay Leno has one of these because he has shown it in his videos, Jay Leno's Garage. The White Steamer, it's a car. They had steam cars back then, actual cars that could drive around on steam. The Panama Canal, again. All right, let's see if we can get this open. Forest fires, uh, Uncle Sam labors to prevent. More uh, dirigibles and balloons and airplanes. American sailors royally entertained in Australia. Uh, looks like uh, full regalia and Marines. Lots of great photos. Bloodiest race war of the year in Springfield, Illinois. Interesting stuff and tragic and depressing too because this is a race war between 
blacks and whites and very depressing stuff. A six million dollar fire nearly wipes out a flourishing New England city. These days they'd be talking about billions and not millions. All right, so here's an interesting one. The penal institution in New York. Now this is very tragic, but I think it's interesting to see what we used to do with people who were murderers. We electrocuted them. That way people weren't spending $150,000 a year to house them in New York's jails, because that's what it costs today. I think if you're a murderer, you know, capital punishment is okay, but that's just a, my opinion. I don't have a problem with it. You know, if you do something bad to a child, murder a child, rape a child, you deserve to die. My personal thoughts. Actors and actresses caught on camera as they stood before the footlights. Some fun stuff and some drawings and characters and big costumes. How much fun is that? Boy, thespians looked very different back then. Lots of fun ribbons and dramatic scenes. And of course, this is the theater. We're not talking about motion picture. Now here's one that I think is very interesting. Two men of color, listen to the caption. Williams and Walker, the popular entertainers who lately celebrated their 16th year of stage partnership. Uh, two gentlemen of color doing dramatic scenes. Very interesting. I'd like to look into that and I'm curious to learn more about Williams and Walker. And lots of fun drawings and characters. More of the same, lots and lots of the same. You'll have time to look at them when you buy the book. We're not, we're not trying to make too much of a surprise here. We're giving you the full, the full, you know, full presentation of the whole book because then you have a chance to really see the incredible, precious resources here of images. Just tremendous value in just the images. You know. You could take, since these are well out of copyright, you could take a picture of any of these pictures with your camera phone and print them and put them up and blow them up and put them on, a, on your desk, your wall. You can make um, derivative works out of them. You know, maybe post them on Wikipedia if you're interested. I mean, certainly a book this old is out of copyright. more actors. Next is snapshots by skillful amateurs, noted professionals and artists from every state of the union and from all sections of the world. Let's see what they put out. Oh, I think I missed a page. Let's grab the next page. There we go. So just fun stuff. You know, the smallest post office in the United States, the letterhouse at Musa, California, whose postmaster Isaac Frazee is a noted artist. You can see the way the print press worked, it didn't always grab, notice the printing quality. You know, it's always very inconsistent. Old antique books are like that. Here's a clam bake. Wow, clams were bigger back then. Clam bake picture, and here we've got some fun stuff. More clowns, uh, a water carrier, a big gun. People didn't have earplugs, they just held their ears closed. And the oldest fire engine in America, quaint machine owned by the Moravians of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, built in 1698 and brought to the United States in 1763. How much fun is that? I'll bet you that should be on Wikipedia. A one and a half million dollar new custom house, a massive and costly edifice, the splendid new custom house which cost one and a half million dollars. Wow, that would be extremely huge money today. A drawbridge, a lady taking a spin in an automobile. There's another tear here. A wide survey of the world's doings. You can see the, the train going up a steep cliff there. These are artists building a Trojan horse for a spectacle in a Paris theater. Snowy railroad. Icicles. 
everywhere. Let me grab these pages so that I can get at them. Fun stuff. A city of tents, camp of the Knights of Pythias at the National Enclave, oh, Conclave in Detroit. Boys in their fireman uniform. You can see that they, instead of cowboys and Indians, they were doing firemen back then. And cute little baskets of, of little animals. Some things never change. People love animals. They loved them back then too. More animals. Someone's fishing. A cart pulled by a sheep. Or is that a lamb? Looks like a sheep. More animals. Lots of kitty cats, you can see. And what is that curious thing? Is that a... It's a lobster. Is it a lobster? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Looks like a dead lobster, though. All right, somebody who just didn't ever want to cut their fingernails. You got really long fingernails. Boy, life was different 100 years ago, and it sure was a lot of fun to go through this book. I certainly hope that you will have as much fun, you know, looking at the pages as we did today in this review of Around the World with a Camera. Thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to consider this eBay auction. We really appreciate your support of Dreams to Reality Foundation.